So you've heard of, heard of us talking about something's coming on September 12th. Well, that day is today and has finally arrived, and I'm excited to tell you about it. But this day was a several years in the making. In fact, it began a couple years ago at an elder retreat. We were looking at our church mission statement, and our mission statement is to worship, connect, and impact. And as we assessed our different ministries, we realized there was a lot that went under worship and connect, and that we had some strong things under impact, but we could certainly grow there. And so we wanted to put some more energy into becoming more of an impacting church. And so the session commissioned a team of people to do some research to say, are there some practices, are there some missional disciplines that we can give ourselves to that would help us live into the impact side of our mission statement? And so the team that initially started this was Amber and Andy Stites, Stacey Tessero, Adam Bright, and Dan Dupi, and myself. And so what we did, we went off and we researched other churches, what they've been doing as far as encouraging their churches to take small, simple steps that would help them reach out to their neighbors, their coworkers, and others in their life. And we experimented. Sometimes we would try something and we'd come back and say, oh, it didn't, didn't really do anything. And so we came down where there was three disciplines that really propelled us outward, that really started, started opening up opportunities to share our faith. And those are these, pray, bless, and Jesus. Pray. We pray because prayer connects us to the power that is able to actually change lives. But then how do we actually touch people? Well, we realized we had to do something tangible to show up in their life, and we learned that blessing other people sharing the kindness that we have received from Christ actually put a smile on their face. It opened up relationships that we didn't anticipate. Then finally was the G. Oh, I'm sorry. Jesus. It's a J, not a G. <laughs> we claim to follow Jesus. We think he's something fascinating to us. So we want to learn how does he care for other people? And then as the Spirit invites us, invite others to find out how amazing Jesus Christ is. And so that's what PBJ stands for. Pray, bless, and Jesus. Now, I think you guys got this. What's the P stand for? Pray. All right. B? Bless. And the J? Jesus. Jesus. Excellent. So over the course of this next year, we're, we're going to be talking about these different elements. We're going to start off talking about prayer. We'll begin today. In the next two weeks, we're going to focus on prayer and then invite you into a discipline where you incorporate prayer into your life. Specifically, missional praying, praying for those in your world that Christ would reach out to them and call them to himself. The second thing, later in the year, in, around December, we're going to start talking about blessing. What does it look like to bless others tangibly? How do we share this kindness we've received from God with others? And then later, March 2022 probably, we'll be looking at the J. How do we learn from Christ how he loved others, and then how do we invite others into that? So this is going to be a year-long plan, and we are going to invite you at each stage into a new set of disciplines that you'll be able to incorporate into your personal life, but we also want to do them together as, as a church, and so I've already asked the care group leaders to do this and debrief it as care groups each time you guys meet, but then if you're not in a care group, we want to find ways that you can have community doing this together. One of the things that we discovered was that doing it as a team made the biggest difference. If you have someone to celebrate with, you have someone who inspires you to commiserate when things don't, don't go well. It made all the difference in the world. And so we want to have little teams talking about what does it look like to pray, bless, and follow Jesus. Now, as you hear this today, I hope two things are going on. One, I hope you're connecting this to the past and thinking this is something that you can, in fact, do. So if you've been around North Park for a while, a couple years ago, we did a thing called From One to One. We started praying for our friends. Well, that sounds a lot like what we're going to do when we start praying. We're going to pray. We're going to ask God to be present in our world and specifically asking God to give us opportunities to share his love and grace with others. Some of you already do fantastic jobs of blessing others. Those of you who serve with any Costco down at Light of Life, that's a way of blessing. So there's things we've been doing that already do these kinds of things. And so as you're hearing it today, you might be saying, I already do some of this stuff. Great. So please don't think this is going to be something drastically new that's going to be completely outside of your orbit. You've been doing some things like this. For those of you who feel in that way, though, I also want to say, excel still more. When you hear the invitations, I want you to ask yourself, can you challenge yourself a little bit? Move to the edge of what's comfortable for you. What I've discovered is that as we begin to live on that edge of comfortability, suddenly that edge of comfortability grows. 
as you take a little step, and it's like, oh, I, I can do something a little bit more risky. And that's where growth begins to happen. And what I've seen in each team member who's done this is that suddenly that comfortability orbit begins to expand. And they try things that they actually surprise themselves with. And I believe if you try PBJ with us, you'll, you'll surprise yourself as well. Not just yourself, though. You'll also see God showing up in tangible ways. Our hope is that PBJ is something you find doable. Whether you're a taxi mom, whether you're working 60 hours a week, it's something you can do in the midst of everything else that you're doing. You can pray, bless, and follow Jesus. And so it should be integrated into the course of your life. It's not something you have to tack on. Rather, find it in the midst of what you're already doing. This is doable. So what happens when you start doing these three simple practices? Here's the outcome I've witnessed most often in people's lives. It gives you this expectation that God's going to show up and do some really cool things in your life. And you're going to find opportunities where you never saw them before. And that's been almost across the board, everyone's experience, that it gives them eyes to see things that weren't there before. So for instance, I was at Lowe's last year when they had the, the blockbuster, you know, Christmas sales. And I was in, and there weren't a lot of shoppers, but I was, I was walking past this line of poinsettias. And I overheard someone saying, well, should I buy one of those for my, for my neighbors? Now, let's be honest, in PBJ, you can steal someone's idea, right? So I'm walking by, I hear this idea, buy a flower for a neighbor, I look over, it's only a dollar. And I thought, eh, I could buy a, flower, a couple flowers for my neighbors, so I buy several flowers. We gave one of those to my neighbors, and they're elderly, they had not been out of their home very often. Because of COVID, they hadn't even seen their kids in a while, even their grandkids. And giving them this $1 point, so you thought I would have given them a $50 gift card somewhere. They were so thankful. They said, we've never had a neighbor give us a flower, ever. And then every time I talked to them after that, they were telling me where they moved it, how it was doing. The flower became a part of our conversation. That's a simple blessing. And I would have never thought to do that in my entire life, ever. But I was walking through those. I heard someone say, buy one for a neighbor. And I thought, Lord, I'm asking for opportunities. Maybe I should do that, and I'm glad I did. So we are going to do this together as a church body. We're doing it as adults. We're also going to do it in our children's and youth ministry. So Kelly's going to tell us what's it going to look like to do PBJ in the youth or the children's ministry. You can hold this and show it. Yep, in Sunday school, we are launching what we're calling PBJ Pal and Journals, and basically. One child from each class every week will take home the PAL and um, a journal. And so over the week, the child will be encouraged by their parent to do PB and J. So for the first few weeks, we'll be focusing on the P for praying. And um, basically, the child will pray for whoever God lays on his heart. And then write down those prayers in the journal um, for whoever he prayed for. And so they could also draw pictures of the people they're praying for or include photos of the people they're praying for and put them in the journal. Um, the PAL is kind of along for the ride. Um, in that maybe like a child could snuggle up with the pal as they say their bedtime prayers. Or maybe the pal could eat breakfast with the child as she prays um, for their day. However a family does it, kids will be encouraged to pray and to record their prayers. And so um, after having the, the pal in the journal for a week, the child will bring it back to Sunday school and give somebody else a chance to take it home the next week. So we're really excited to see um, to see God at work through PB&J and, and even in our kids' lives. You know, obviously PBJ isn't an obligation of something you have to do, but it's an invitation of something that you get to do. And I really want to invite all of our teenagers into this. And some of you may be thinking, some of you teens may be thinking, I can't do this. Well, over the past six and a half years, I've seen students come to a saving faith because their friend invited them to youth group, because they were praying for them. They sought ways to bless them, and they showed them the light of Christ. So you are able, you are equipped to do this. And we, we want to be able to provide you that accountability and that encouragement during discussion groups. Every other week at youth group, your adult leaders will check in with you to see how you're doing. You can share stories about victories. And let me say, victories doesn't just mean I led someone to Christ. That is an awesome victory. A victory can be I've been praying every single day this week to be more missional. It can be, I found a way to bless someone at school this week. I found a way to show the light 
of Christ. So sharing those victories, also sharing frustrations, because we're going to have challenges. There's going to be frustrations. And I'm really hoping and praying during that time students can encourage one another and say, hey, I blessed someone this way this week. Maybe you could try doing that. And adult leaders can give you ideas for how you can be praying more specifically, how you can be blessing in very specific ways. I'm hoping out of those discussion groups will become stories that you'd be willing to share with the church. I know standing up here can be very intimidating, but we have a great uh, video ministry where we can interview you beforehand and have these stories up on screen to encourage the rest of the church. The Apostle Paul says that young people should set an example for the older members of the church, and you can definitely do that.